Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Politics here at the Hindu with me Nistula Hebbar where we unpack the news making the headlines in domestic politics. We are at the end of a very long cycle of assembly elections in the states of Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Goa and Manipur. Uh, I'm recording this on us on Sunday with one phase left to go uh, for the conclusion of polls in Uttar Pradesh but that should not make a difference to what we are about to discuss in this episode of talking politics and no i am not talking about uh, who is going to win in these elections and what those uh, outcomes could mean politically but the plain vanilla facts of the vote polling percentages the theories around it what it could mean for the outcomes and what the data says about polling percentages when polls were held in punjab on february 20th it left uh, most of the poll watchers a little bit confused and some of them frankly stumped because uh, all of the reports that were coming out in the media uh, from Punjab uh, pointed to a desire for change among the people of Punjab with the Aam Aadmi Party being the likeliest challenger to the Congress which was trying to defend its turf there. Um, so uh, the polling percentage when it came out uh, was a bit of a rude shock because it went against that most fervently believed Hori Chestnut of polling that when there is a desire for change among the populace, the voting percentage goes up. In that situation, we found that in Punjab, the polling percentage actually went down uh, a little more than 5%. That is, it went down from 77.4% in 2017 when the state last went in for assembly elections to 71.95%. Uh, when, uh, therefore, uh, this kind of uh, confused everybody and now uh, there, is, there are a lot of theories being floated about a vote transfer uh, from the BJP to the Congress uh, in order to keep the AAP, AAM Aadmi Party out, uh, percentages of polling in uh, areas where uh, AAM Aadmi Party is dominant, that is uh, the Malwa region is also being gone into uh, with a fine tooth comb. Uh, but <clears throat> we should also look at polling percentages in other states that went into polls recently and then of course look at some of the data uh, and what it says from the data from the past and what it says about polling percentages and outcomes. So uh, let me just read this out to you. In the other states that went to polls, polling percentages have led to other conclusions. In the six phases that have gone to polls in UP, where the Samajwadi Party has, has mounted a challenge to the BJP, there was an expectation that there would be higher polling. But the polling in the six phases so far is 61.16%, while in two, uh, 2017 it was 61.42%. So far that's roughly the same as the last time. In Uttarakhand, the percentage was marginally higher at 65.37%. Uh, whereas it was 64.72% uh, in 2017. In Goa, the percentage dipped from 81.21% uh, from 81 uh, in 2017 to 78.94% in 2022. In Manipur, the percentage of polling, like in UP, is almost the same with 86.01% this time and 85.87% in 2017. So what does it all mean? Well, I'd like to take you back to a study which I keep citing to other people who are more adventurous in terms of floating theories. The moment polling is over without waiting for the, uh, you know, the number, the votes to be counted. Uh, this is a study by the Center for the Study of Developing Societies. And uh, it looked at uh, uh, electoral outcomes, electoral outcomes in 110 elections. Uh, and the percentage of polling in those uh, elections. Uh, this is for a decade uh, from 1998 uh, to 2008, which is a 10-year period. And uh, the study found that in elections when the incumbent government was pushed out, that is uh, when there was a change in government, uh, there were 66 uh, elections, such elections in the 110 that this survey, this uh, study went into. Uh, well, the turn uh, turn up, uh, turnout was up in 28 of these uh, 66 elections. It, uh, the polling percentage declined in, the 18, in 18 of these 66 elections and remained the same in 20. So, in 38 out of the 66 polls that saw a change of government in this data set, uh, the percentage of polling either declined or remained static. In the cases where the incumbent government was voted back, that is 44 cases, the turnout increased in 14 polls, decreased in 13 and remained unchanged in, nine, in 17 of these polls. 
I'm sorry to burst many theories here. Percentage of polling, therefore, does not reveal the outcome of a poll. Rather, as Rukmini S. says in her book, uh, a good book, I think all of you should pick it up, India in Numbers, Whole Numbers and Half-Truths, it matters as to who votes, uh, whether marginal sections come out to vote, uh, whether women uh, are coming out in large numbers to vote, uh, what is the polling percentage in uh, in uh, areas where migrant populations uh, have moved out and are working in other areas where a lot of migrant labor exists, uh, where outside vote also exists. So there are these all these um, interlocking sort of things that need to be taken in mind. One whole number of a polling percentage at the end of polling day is not going to explain to you, is not going to reveal much to you. Uh, uh, these are statistical niceties, however, that one goes into only after the results are declared when you have a lot of the data which is available, publicly available and then you can go into it and have a look as to who came out to vote, whether there was a rural urban divide um, among the communities that were polled, uh, in which polling booth, uh, you know, there was higher amount of polling, what is the demographic uh, break up of that particular polling booth. These are things that you can do after the results come out. So what is uh, so what can uh, we say about polling percentages? Well, the only thing we can say with any uh, certainty that it is an irrefutable fact that voting percentages have improved uh, in India from uh, back in the 1990s, and it is in large part. Uh, because of improvement in voter registration rates by the election commission, the cleaning up of uh, voting rolls, uh, making polling booths and other election wherewithal um, accessible to the uh, voter. There is a lot of awareness among people that they should be exercising their democratic rights. And uh, the biggest uh, uh, takeaway from all this exercise has been the fact that uh, the number of women voters have been steadily increasing in India, which is a very progressive trend. Therefore, dear viewer, the sad truth is that you and all the netas who were in the fray in this election have to wait till March 10th uh, to know the results. I'm very sorry to burst your bubble. At which point, that is after March 10th, which is a Thursday, at which point that will be time uh, for another episode of Talking Politics and I'll see you then. Goodbye.